A Christmas Carol. Marley was dead to begin with. There was no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Mind, I don't know what there is particularly dead about a doornail. I, myself, regard a coffin nail as the deadest piece of iron in the trade. But the wisdom of our ancestors is in this simile, and my unhallowed hand shall not disturb it, nor the country is done for. You will therefore permit me to repeat emphatically that Marley was as dead as a doornail. This must be distinctly understood or nothing wonderful can come of this story I am going to relate. Scrooge knew he was dead. Of course he did. Scrooge and he were partners for I know, don't know how many years. Scrooge was his sole friend and sole mourner. And even Scrooge was not so dreadfully cut up by the sad event. But he was an excellent man of business on every day of the funeral and solemnized it with an undoubted bargain. Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. There it stood, years afterwards, above the warehouse door, Scrooge and Marley. Scrooge! Sometimes people knew, knew, sometimes people knew to the business called Scrooge, Scrooge, and sometimes Marley. He answered to both names. It was all the same to him. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone. Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah. <laughs> ah. Once upon a time, once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. It was cold, bleak, biting, foggy weather. The fog was so dense it came pouring in at every chink and keel. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who, in a dismal little cell beyond, was copying letters. Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was very much smaller. <clears throat> but he couldn't replenish it, for Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room. And so surely as the clerk came into surely the room... Cratchit! Yes, sir? What do you want? Just a bit more coal, sir. Cratchit? Yes, sir? I am beginning to wonder if I can afford the luxury of a clerk. Wherefore the clerk put on his white comforter and tried to warm himself at the candle, in which effort, not being a man of strong imagination, Cratchit sneezes and he blows out the candle. He failed. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you, cried A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Bah. Humbug. Humbug Christmas? Oh, Uncle, you don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Yes, well then, what right have you to be dismal? 
what reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. That? Well... Uh, uh, oh! Uh, Scrooge! Uh, <clears throat> Scrooge, having no better answer ready on the spur of the moment, said... Uh, again, and followed it up with... Humbug? Don't be cross, Uncle. Don't what else crow. can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas. Out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you? But a time for paying bills without money. A time for finding yourself a year older, but not an hour richer. Every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stink of holly through his heart. Uncle! <laughs> what, what, what? Nephew, keep uh, Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good it has ever done you. Well, there are many things from which I might have received uh, some good uh, by which I have not profited, I dare say, but Christmas is among the rest. Uh, but I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it came to mind as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women are, seem to be consent to have opened their shut heart, shut up hearts freely, and to think God of... Rest ye merry gentlemen, there's nothing uh, new to say, remember mm -hmm. Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. And I believe it has done me good, and I do say, God bless it. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, crap! Hey, 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 hey! Let me hear another sound from you, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. <laughs> oh, you're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder why you don't go into Parliament. Oh, don't be angry, Hungle. Hungle, the Hungle. <laughs> Come, uh, dine with us tomorrow night. Uh, you see me in hell first. Oh, oh but why? <sighs> why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Oh, because you fell in love. Good afternoon. Oh, nay, Uncle, but you never come to see me before that happened. And why give it a reason for not coming now? What are you reading? Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why cannot we be friends? Yeah, you got a difference. Good afternoon. All right. <laughs> good. good. Good afternoon and a happy new year. Merry Christmas. Oh, good afternoon. Get out. Get out. <laughs> 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 oh, nephew. Uh, Jim, what are you reading? Well, I got the original script. <laughs> oh, God. That's yeah. not the one that Linda sent. Say oh, your I'm next sorry. line. Huh? Say your next line. I will That's what I'm you. saying. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's hey. it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and a happy new year, says yeah. the nephew. Bye, Cratch. No, my nephew. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ah. Merry Christmas, sir. Yeah. Okay, that Dick, take over. His clerk, cold as he was, was warmer than Scrooge. 
Oh, my clerk is a lunatic with 15 shillings a week and a wife and a family talking about a Merry Christmas. I'll retire to Bedlam. This lunatic, in letting Scrooge's nephew out, had let two other people, good people, come in. Mercy, that's my uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Ha have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or uh, Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley is dead. He died seven years ago. This very night. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> This festive season ah. of the year, Mr. Oh. Scrooge. Oh, my God. Uh, it is more than usually desirable that we should have some slight, slight provision for the poor and the destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Oh, no. Many oh, thousands are in want of common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Uh -huh. you have a what? Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons, oh. sir. And the workhouses, are they still in operation? Uh, they are still. I wish I could say they were not. Oh, good. I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear it. Well, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor meat and drink. Yeah. And means of warmth, we we choose this time because it is a time of all others when want is keenly felt oh. and abundance rejoices. Uh, what shall I put you down for? Mm, nothing. Oh, you wish to remain anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Oh. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. Uh-huh. Yeah. What do you think? Um, many can't go to the... Uh, uh, and they would rather die. Uh-huh. Mr. Scrooge? Yeah. Uh, number one. Want me to do one? Talk to number one. Mr. Talk to Scrooge, number one. Uh, uh, Mr. Scrooge, yeah. we must uh, make some uh, slight provision for the poor and destitute. Oh, they oh, suffer oh, greatly oh. at this present time. Uh huh. Well, true. I help support those establishments I mentioned. They cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. Two. Jim. Two. Uh, Many can't go there, and many would rather die. Well, if they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Besides, excuse me, I don't know that. But what is you mean? might know it. Well, it's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's mind occupies me constantly. <gasps> Good afternoon. Seeing clearly that it would be useless to pursue their point, the good people withdrew. The cold became intense. Oh. Cratchit? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. What, Cratchit? What are you doing? Tipping the page. Just a snap. <laughs> oh. oh. Are you uh, copying, copying letters? letters? I'm copying oh, letters. Okay. Uh, right, check. Right, check. What? Yes, sir. Work. Mm -hmm. Foggier yet and colder. Piercing, biting, cold. 
a young boy and musicians knock at the door, catch it, answers it. Musicians start to play. We have a young boy. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good roll. <laughs> Bah. Oh gosh! At length, the hour of shutting up the um, 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 church bells. Hmm. Seven, seven. Hmm. At length, the hour of shutting up the counting house has arrived. With an ill will, Scrooge dismounts from his stool and tactfully admits the fact that the expectant clerk in the tank, who insistently snuffs his candle out. You want all day tomorrow, I suppose. Uh, if quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient. And it's not fair. And if I was to stop half a crown for it, if you think yourself ill using it, you don't take me ill use when I pay a day's wages, wages for no work. The clerk observed that it was only once a year. It's only once a year, sir. That's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Bah! Humble. It's only, it is only once a year, sir. Uh, hmm. Must I give him the whole day? Okay, I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. Yes, sir. I promise. Nah. Merry Christmas. How about you? The office was closed in the twinkling, and the clerk, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling about his waist, ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play at Blind Man's Bluff. Uh, the musicians continue to play joyously as he passes them. Scrooge hits the lead musician on the shins with his cane as he passes by them. Music changes to a somber tune. Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, and having read all the newspapers and beguiled the rest of the evening with his baker book, went home to bed. Scrooge chews on a toothpick. He lived in a house which had once belonged to his deceased partner, Jacob Marley. It was old and dreary. Nobody lived in it but Scrooge. The old fog and fa frost so hung about the black old gateway that the yard was so dark and that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, was forced to grope with his hands all the way to the threshold. A door is carried on stage. <laughs> Sorry. Music. Now, it is the fact that there was nothing at all particular about the knocker on the door, except that it was very large. It is also a fact that Scrooge had a little of what is called fancy about him as any man in the city of London. Then let any man explain to me, if he can, how it happened that Scrooge, reaching for that door, having his key on the lock of the door, saw in the knocker, not a knocker, but music. Marley. Marley. Jacob Marley. Uh, Marley. Marley. Marley's face. That's the one. Oh, sorry. Uh, saw. My bad. Saw in this face. <laughs> What? 
Marley, Jacob Marley, that was your line, sorry. Marley's oh, face. Yes. As Scrooge looked fixedly at this phenomenon, it was the knocker again. He put his head upon the key he had relinquished, turned it sturdily, and walked in. Scrooge minds business vocally. There was <laughs> nothing on the back of the door, so he said, Ooh. And it closed with a bang. Scrooge was not a man to be easily frightened. Huh. <laughs> he walked across the hall and up the stairs, slowly too, not carrying a button for the dark. Darkness is cheap. And I like it. I like it. Mm. But before he shut his heavy door, he searched his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room? Lumber room? Lumber room? Bed room? Bedroom's good. All as they should be? Nope. Nobody on the windowsill? <laughs> Nobody up the fireplace? Nobody under the bed? Ooh. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Nobody in his dressing gown, which was hanging up on the suspicious attitude against the wall. Uh, what do I got a line? Bah. Yeah. Bah. Quite satisfied, he closed the door and locked himself in, as Scrooge does. Double locked himself in, mm -hmm. which was not his custom. Mm -hmm. He took up his gruel, for Scrooge had a cold in his head, and sat down before the fire. Mm. Uh, uh, um, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Humbug. It's humbug still, I won't believe it. His color changed, though. When, without a pause, it came on through a heavy door and passed into the room before his eyes. Marley's uh, Oh, no. Well, what do you want with me? Oh, much. Marley's voice, no doubt about it. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? You certainly, you're certainly particular for a ghost. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you, can you sit down? I can. Well, try it then. You don't believe me, observed. I do not. You don't? What evidence have you of my reality beyond that of your senses? I don't know. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a little thing affects them. You may be. An undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. Yeah. Ah, there's more gravy than <laughs> grave. <laughs> About you, whatever you are, you see this toothpick? I do. You're not looking at it. But I see it, notwithstanding. Ah, well, I have but to swallow this and be for the rest of my days persecuted by a legion of goblins, all of them my own creation. Humbug, I tell you. Humbug. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Mercy, for operations, why do you trouble me? Man of the worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? <laughs> I, 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 I do, I must, but why do spirits walk the earth and why do they come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide as if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world. Oh, woe is me. Whoa, Jacob. Jacob Marley, <laughs> you are fettered. Uh, fettered. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and chain and large by yard. I girded it on one of my own free will. And my own free will, I wore it. It's pattern strange to you? Ah, uh, Jacob. Oh, oh, Jacob Marley, tell me more. Speak comfort to me, you Jacob. No, know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It, it was full as heavy and as long as this seven Christmases Eve ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. I'm really lost now. Uh, seven years dead and traveling all the time? I... I... Uh, Ah, yes, the <laughs> whole time. Oh, uh, you travel fast. Well, on the wings of the wind. Oh, you might have got over a great quantity of ground in seven years if you hadn't been so... Well, <laughs> oh, God. Uh. Oh, Captain... Oh, you captive, bound, and double-ironed. Oh, it's that life, that opportunity misused. Yet such was I. Oh, oh but, 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 Jacob, Jacob, you were always a good man of business. Business! Oh. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The uh -huh. feelings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Ah. Uh, uh. I don't like that. Hear me. Hear me. My time is nearly gone. Well, I will. I will. But uh, look, uh, don't be so hard upon me. Don't be flowery, Jacob. Pray. Please. Uh, that is the light part of my penance. <laughs> I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. Oh. A chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. Oh, oh, thank you, Jacob. You were always a good friend to me. You will be haunted by three spirits. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, is, is that the chance and hope you mentioned, Jacob? 
It is. Well, you know what? I, I uh, think I'd rather not. Uh, without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. It's like the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. <laughs> Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jake? I expect the second one on the next night at the same hour. The third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more and look that for your own sake you may remember what has passed between us. Remember me. Remember me. Scrooge followed to the window and looked out. The air was filled with phantoms wandering hither and thither in restless haste and moaning as they went. Every one of them wore chains like Marley's ghost. The misery with them all was that they sought to do good in human matters and had lost the power forever. Scrooge uh, tried to say a um, uh, but stopped at the first syllable. And, and being much in need of repose, went straight to bed and fell asleep upon the instant. past two when I went to bed. Twelve? Oh, this clock is wrong. My school must have got into the works. Twelve. What? Is it possible that I can have slept through the whole day and far into another night? And is it possible that something has happened to the sun? And this is twelve at noon with, with no sun. There will be no days to count by, with no days to count. Then any demand for payment, oh, starting in three days' time, pay to Ebenezer Scrooge, and, and so on and so forth, will become as worthless as a United States secure. United States security. <laughs> Puzzled, Scrooge scrambled back to bed. And thought and thought and thought and thought it over and over and over and could make nothing of it. Marley's ghost bothered him exceedingly. Every time he resolved within himself that it was all a dream. It was all a dream. His mind flew back to it again. Uh, <laughs> and presented the same problem to be worked all through. Was it a dream or not? I think Una takes over as narrator now. It was all a dream. Una is in the building. Oh, hmm. where? Uh, puzzle? Wait. There is no narrating over here. It, I thought it was voice one. Yeah. Okay. It was all a dream. Mm. It wasn't mm. a dream. Huh? It was all a dream. It mm. wasn't a dream. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Oh, Scrooge yeah, lay yeah, yeah. in this state until the chime had gone three quarters more. And when he remembered on a sudden, the ghost warned me I would have a visitor when the bell tolled one. Hmm. 
We'll just wait and see. At length, four quarters broke upon his listening ear. Quarter past. Ding dong! Half past. Ding dong! Quarter to it. Ding dong! The hour itself, and nothing else. <laughs> the hour bell sounded with a deep, dull, hollow, melancholy one. Scrooge found himself face to face with an unearthly visitor as close to him as I am to you now. And I am standing in the spirit at your elbow. <laughs> Are you the spirit whose uh, coming was foretold to me? I am. Who am <laughs> What are you? I am the ghost of the Christmas past. Ooh. Long past? No, your past. Ah. Uh, maybe I, may I be so bold as to inquire what uh, business brought you here? Your welfare. <gasps> oh, I am much obliged. But I cannot help thinking that I, a night of unbroken rest would be more conducive to that end. Your reclamation then, take heed. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Come and walk with me. No, no, no. Come. No, the weathers and the hour are not suitable for pedestrian purposes. Come. No, the, the thermometer is a long way below freezing. The bed is warm. And I, 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 I am dressed, but lightly, only in slippers, dressing gown, and a nightcap. <laughs> Walk. <laughs> I a horrible cold. <sighs> no. Not out the window, I'll fall. There, but a touch of my hand there. And you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either side. And it was clear, cold, winter day, with snow upon the ground. Good heavens, I was bred in this place. I was a boy here. He was conscious of a thousand odors floating in the air, each one connected with a thousand thoughts and hopes and joys and cares long and long forgotten. Your lips is trembling, and what is that upon your chin? Uh, it's, uh, oh, it's a pimple. Come, you remember the way? Remember it? I could walk it blindfold. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. They walked along the road, Scrooge recognizing every tree and post and gate. Some shaggy ponies trotted towards them with boys upon their backs who called out to other boys in the county gigs and carts. Uh, I, I know these boys. These are but shadows of the things that have been. They have no conscious, uh, consciousness of us. Uh, is that your fault? <laughs> Yes, again over Christmas. Bring me something. Want a race? I want to see you try. You couldn't if you tried. Uh, I, I can name them every one. Hello, Johnny. It's Johnny Williams and, and Oliver Quince. Hey, Oliver. Hello. Oh, and big Bill Bowman. Hello, Bill. And, oh, and little Robert. Oh, little Robert. Oh, little Robert. What's his name? Hello, Robbie. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Bill. What is Merry Christmas to you? 
Wow. Merry Christmas, Johnny! Out upon Merry Christmas. Oliver, Mary. What good has it ever done you? The school is not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends and family, is left there still. I know. <laughs> Suddenly, there was an earthly savor in the air, mm. a chilly bareness in the place. Before them, was disclosed a long, bare, melancholy room. My school, my own, my own boarding school. And not too much to eat. Oh, no. <laughs> a lonely boy was reading near a feeble fire. Scrooge recognized this, his poor forgotten self, as he had used to be. Suddenly, a man in foreign garments wonderfully real and distinct to look at, stood outside the window with an axe stuck in his belt and leading by a bridle an ass laden with wood. Why, it's Alibaba. It's dear old honest Alibaba. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, one Christmas time when I was left here all alone, a solitary child, I, he did come for the first time just like that. Poor boy. Oh, 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 and that's the parrot. Robinson Crusoe's parrot. Green body, yellow tail, and, and a thing like lettuce growing out of the top of his head. Oh, there he is. It would have surprised his business friends to hear Scrooge expending all the earnestness of his nature on such subjects. Squawk! Hoo Hoop! Hello! Oh, and Little Red Riding Hood, there she is. She came to me one Christmas Eve to give me information of the cruelty of that wolf who ate her grandmother. Oh, she was my first love. If I could have married Little Red Riding Hood, I should have known perfect bliss, but it was not to be. Poor boy, I wish it's too late now. What is the matter? Nothing, nothing. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I, I, I should like to have given him something. That's all. Let us see another Christmas. Scrooge's former self grew larger at the words, and the room became a little darker and more dirty. How all this came about, Scrooge no, knew no more than you do. He only knew that everything had happened so, that here, there he was, alone again, when all the other boys had gone home for the jolly holidays. Oh, I remember that door. It opened. A little girl came darting in. Dear brother, dear brother, dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home. Dear brother, to bring you home, home, home. Home? Little fan? Yes, home for good and all. Home forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be. That's homes like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one dark night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should. And sent me in a coach to bring you and you are to be a man and are never to come back here. And we're to be together all Christmas long. Oh, you are quite a woman, little fan. She dragged him to the door and to the carriage that carried them swiftly home. Always a delicate creature whom a breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. So she had, you're right. She died a woman and had, as I think, a children. Uh, one child. True, your nephew. 
Scrooge seemed uneasy in his mind and answered briefly, Yes. In a moment, they left the school. Behind them were, were in the streets of a city. It was evening. The ghost stopped at a certain warehouse door and asked, Do you know this place? Know it? Was I apprenticed here? Oh, ooh, why, it's all Fizzywigs. Bless his heart, it's Fizzywig alive again. Ooh, seven! Oh, 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 what's this? Ah, hey, oh, huh. oh, yo, there, Ebenezer! Scrooge's former self, now a grown young man, came briskly in. Ho oh, ho, Dick! Oh. Accompanied by his fellow apprentice. Dick Williams, to be sure, bless me, yes, there he is, dear, dear. Yo ho, my boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Let's have our shutters up. Before a man can say Jack Robinson. Yes, sir, Mr. Fezziwig. You wouldn't believe how those two fellows went at it. They charged into the streets with the shutters. One, two, three, and had them up in their places. Four, five, six, barred them and pinned them. Seven, eight, nine, and came back before you could have just count to twelve, panting like racehorses. Highly ho 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 Clear away, my lads. Let's have a lots of room here. Hilly ho, Dick. Cheer up, Ebenezer. Clear away. Clear away. There was nothing they couldn't do or couldn't have cleared away with old Fezziwig looking on. It was done in a minute. And the warehouse was snug, warm, and dry, and bright as a ballroom. In came a fiddler. He looked a prominent position and tuned like fifty stomach aches. In came Mrs. Feggywig, one vast substantial smile. In came the little Miss Feggywigs, beaming and lovable. In came the young followers whose hearts they broke. In came all the young men and women employed in the business. In came the household of the baker, the cook, the milkman, and in they all came, and one after another, some shyly, some boldly, some pushing, some pulling, they all came, anyhow, everywhere, and they all went. Away they all went to dance. Well done, <laughs> well done. There were more dances, and there were games. Uh, there were games and more dances. Yeah. And, there was, and there was cake and hot punch. And there were my, mince pies and plenty of beer and more dances. dances. But the great effect. Dances. dances. But the great effect of the evening came after the roast and boiled when old Fezziwig stood out to dance with Mrs. Fezziwig. <clears throat> An artful dog, mind. Sort of man who knows his business better than you or I. <gasps> well done, Mr. Fezziwig. <laughs> During the whole of this time, Scrooge had acted like a man out of his wits. His heart and soul were in the scene, and with his former self... He corroborated everything, remembered everything, enjoyed everything, and underwent the strangest agitation. He remembered the ghost. Oh, dancing for Mr. Fezziwig is almost as hard as working for him. We need a dick. Dick, dick. <laughs> I'll be Dick. Yes, but working for Mr. Mr. Fezziwig is almost as much fun as dancing for him. 
Mm. A small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Why is it not? He has spent but a few pounds. Is that so much that he deserves this praise? It isn't that spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our work a delight or a burden. And if that power lies in words and looks and things so slight and insignificant, what then? The happiness it gives is quite as great as if it costs a fortune. What is the matter? Nothing particular. Something, I think. No, 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 no. I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's, that's all. My time grows short. Quick. Again, Scrooge saw himself. He was older now. Oops. <laughs> he was older now. His face had begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. He was not alone, but by his side was a fair young girl. Bell. It matters little to you, very little. Another idol has displaced me, and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. This is the even-handed dealing of the world. There's, there's nothing on which it is so hard as poverty. And, and there is nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much. All your other hopes have merged into that one great hope of being beyond the reach of adversity. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. Have I not? What then, even if I have grown so much wiser, what then? I am not changed toward you, am I? You are changed. Our contract is an old one. When it was made, you were another man. I, I was a boy. Your own feeling tells you that you are not what you were. I am. How often and how keenly I have thought of this, I will not say. It is not enough that I have thought of it and can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words? No, never. In, in what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. If this had never been between us, tell me. Would you seek me out and try to win me now? Ah, no. <sighs> you, you think not. I would gladly think otherwise if I could, heaven knows. But if you were free today, tomorrow, yesterday, can even I believe that you would choose a dourless girl? No. So I release you with a full heart. For the love of him you once were. You may have pain in this a very, very brief time, and you will dismiss the recollection of it gladly as an unprofitable dream from which it happened well that you awoke. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. She left him, and they parted. Say something. Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home. Why do you delight to torture me? One shadow more. No more. No more. I don't wish to see it. Show me no more. Bell. In the noise in this room was perfectly tumultuous. There was not 40 children conducting themselves like one, but every child was conducting itself like 40. But no one seemed to care. Ooh, what would I not give to be one of them? Ooh. 
Oh, when I think that such another creature quite as graceful and as full of promise might have called me father. Yes, and been a springtime in the haggard winter of your life. Yes. Do we have a husband? I need a husband. <laughs> Bella, I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. Oh, who was it? Uh, guess. <laughs> How can I? Tut, I don't know. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as I saw it not shut up, and he had a candle inside, I could scarcely help seeing him. His partner lies upon the point of death, I hear, and there he sat alone, quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, remove me from this place. Spirit. Spirit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I told you. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, now you read the line, I told you these were shadows. Oh, okay. I saw that. What page was that? I don't have the exact 42, page. 42. 42. 42. 42. 40 or 40. Oh, God. I told you that's what... I saw that. I don't know where it went. Uh, Remove me. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> bear it. <laughs> Uh, bye bye. Okay. Oh, bye. I told you these were shadows of the things that have been. That they are what they are. Do not blame me. Remove me. I cannot bear it. <laughs> he turned upon the ghost and saw that it had looked upon him with a face in which some strange way there were fragments of all the faces it had shown him. May you be happy in the life which you have chosen. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Van. 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 Who's Van? Van. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come, come home, dear brother, come home. May you be happy in the life which you have chosen. Leave me. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. Come home, dear brother, come home. May you be happy in the life which you have chosen. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. May you be happy in the life which you have chosen. Come home, dear brother. Come May home. you be happy in the life you have chosen. <laughs> it's Christmas, Ebenezer. Come home, dear brother. Come home. It's Christmas, Ebenezer. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, he was... Conscious oh, of the, he was. Me, me. Get out of he here. was. He was conscious <laughs> of being exhausted. Of being, that anymore. <laughs> he, he was exhausted, <laughs> exhausted of being in his own bedroom, and oh, he had God. barely time to reel to bed before he <laughs> sank <laughs> to a heavy sleep. <laughs> Day <laughs> three. Let's do it, people. You're up, Scrooge. <laughs> ah, where? What? What? Oh, ah. Wait, Scrooge wait. felt that he had been restored to consciousness. 
in the right nick of time for the special purpose of holding conference with the second messenger dispatched oh. him through Jacob oh, no. Marley's intervention. Oh, no. Mm, um, mm, I don't mm. mind calling on you to believe that Scrooge was ready for a good broad field of strange appearances and that nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him very much. Now, being prepared for almost anything, he was not by any means prepared for nothing. Bong! Five minutes, ten minutes, a quarter of an hour went by, yet nothing came. All this time he lay upon the bed, a very core and center of blaze and ruddy light. Uh, this light is more alarming than a dozen ghosts. I am powerless to make out what it means. I, I fear I might be at, at this very moment an interesting case of spontaneous combustion. At last. <sighs> However, he decided that the source and secret of this ghostly light had to be either the fireplace or the window. The fireplace or the window? The fireplace or the window? Suddenly the room underwent a surprising transformation heaped upon the floor were turkeys, geese, poultry, great joints of meat, sucking pigs, long wreaths of sausages, luscious pears, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, and seething, steaming bowls of punch. And there, a jolly, giant, glorious tessy. Whoa! Come forth! Come forth and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> Look upon me. <laughs> you have never seen the likes of me before. Never. I have never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning for I am very young. My elder brothers? I am afraid I have not. Have you had many brothers, spirits? Eighteen hundred and forty-two. Oh! For... <coughs> two? Eighteen... <laughs> for Rex's family to provide for us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. uh. Oh, yeah, spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I, ooh, I learned a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have ought to teach me, let me <laughs> profit by it. <laughs> touch my robe. Okay, whoa, whoa. All vanished instantly, and they stood in the street, city streets on Christmas morning. We need uh, some music and shoppers here. Get your first chop. Toys for the boys and girls. Toys for the boys and girls. To the market, to the market, for the plum cake. To the market. Shop for one. Take it. 
Chopper one. Chopper one. That's Keith. Keith. Am, I, am I one? All right. To the market. To the market to buy a fat pig. Who's the one? We'll just jump in. Sweet China oranges. Home again. Home again. Jiggity jig jig. Chopper two. Chopper two. Chopper two. Chopper two. To market. To market. To buy a fat pig hog. Pig hog. What is this? Who's the three? <laughs> Oh my god, home again, home again. Jiggery, jiggery, jock, To the market, to the market, to buy a plum cake. Oh, holy mistletoe. I spice cinder bread. Home again, home again, market is late. 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 Number three. Number three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a on Christmas Day. It is day. always the same squirrel. Christmas Day. So it is. So it is. God love it. So it is. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. You might get Merry to Christmas. Some bun. buns. Oh, oh. Home again. Home again. Market is done. It's done. Yeah. <gasps> Is it? Uh, oh, is there a hot ho 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 mistletoe? Uh, <laughs> is there a peculiar flavor in what you sprinkle from your torch? There is my own. Um, wouldn't it apply to any kind of uh, dinner on this day? To Ooh. any kindly given. Your poor one most. Uh, why to a poor one most? Because it needs it most. Oh, 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 yeah, of course, of course. Perhaps it was the pleasure the good spirit had in showing off his power of this and that led him straight to Scrooge's clerk. For there he went and took Scrooge Ooh. with him. Ooh. Up rose Mrs. Cratchit, Cratchit's wife, dressed out poorly but twice turned gown down gown, but brave in ribbons, which are cheap and make a goodly show for sixpence. The two small Cratchits, boy and girl, came tearing in. Uh, the goose, mother, the goose. No, the goose. I wanted to tell her we smell the goose. It smells good. Uh huh. It smells better than good. How do you know it's our goose? Because it smells so good. It has to be ours. Uh huh. It smells better than good. I want a leg. So do I. I want a leg too. With lots of gravy. Uh huh. Lots of gravy and onions. Oh, onions, 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 mm, and sage. Sage. Sage and onions. Sage and onions. Sage and onions. Hey, look! Look at Peter. Peter. Where did you get that shirt? Peter, where did you get that shirt? It's father's. Hey. Does he know you're wearing his shirt? Uh huh. Does father know you're? He gave it to me in an honor day. He said, "I don't believe you." I don't believe you. I bet. What you. has ever got your precious father then, and your brother Tiny Tim, and Martha weren't as late last Christmas day by half an hour? Here's Martha, mother. Here's Martha, mother. There's such a goose, Martha. Such a goose. Why, bless your heart alive, my dear. How late you are. We had a deal of work to finish up late last night and had to clear away this morning, mother. Well, never mind so long as you are come. Sit ye down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm Lord bless ye. No, 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 there's no, father there's coming. coming. Hi, Martha, hi. So Martha hid herself, and in came Bob, the father. 
with Tiny Tim upon his shoulders. We have all galloped all the way home from church, and I'm in great need of rest. Ooh, do you mind it if I rest a bit, Master Tim? Thank you, sir. Oh, why? Oh, oh, where's our Martha? Not coming. Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? Did you hear that, Tim? Martha won't be here for Christmas Day. Oh, Father, don't look so sad. You'll make me cry. It's only a joke, Father. We fooled you, surprise! You surprise. surprise. Oh, your <laughs> father <laughs> is oh, easily oh, fooled. fooled. Your father is easily fooled. Come with us, Tim, and listen to the pudding singing in the copper. The pudding is singing. And how did little Tim behave? As good as gold and better. Somehow he gets thoughtful, sitting by himself so much, and thinks the strangest things you've ever heard. He told me, coming home, that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple. Hmm. And it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day he who made lame beggars and walk, blind men see. Tiny Tim is growing strong and hearty. Yeah. His active little church crutch was heard upon the floor. And back came Tiny Tim, escorted by his brother and sister. Master Peter had gone to fetch the goose which he soon returned in high procession, procession. And at last, forced a shot over them, at last, at last, at last, the dishes were set on and grace was said. Bless this food and bless our family. Amen. A breathless pause. And Mrs. Cratchit, looking slowly along the carving knife, preparing to plunge it into the breast. And when she did, the long-expected gush of stuffing issued forth. Yay! Begin! Ah. 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 Oh, don't believe there was ever such a goose cooked. Eked out by applesauce and mashed potatoes, it was sufficient dinner for the whole family. <coughs> the youngest Cratchits, in particular, were steeped in sage and onions to the eyebrows. Mother, I'll help you with the pudding. No, I'm too nervous to bear witness. I'll take it up and bring it in myself, alone. Suppose it should not be done enough. Suppose it should break in turning out. Suppose somebody should have gotten over the wall of the backyard and stolen it while we were merry with the goose. No, no, no. All sorts of horrors were supposed. Suppose it grew feet and ran away. Suppose it joined the circus. Or was kidnapped by pirates. I need Tim. Is anyone awake? Suppose people found it. Suppose people found it. Suppose people found it. Suppose God got jealous and took it to heaven. Oh, oh. Pudding. pudding! Oh, a wonderful pudding, blazing in half and half of quatrain of ignited brandy. Everybody had something to say about it. Pudding! Pudding! But nobody <laughs> said or thought it was at all small pudding for a large family. Any Cratchit would have, have blushed to hint at such a thing. 
begin. Oh, 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 I regard, I'm sorry, I was looking for, well, well, I saw parentheses. I regard this pudding as the greatest success achieved <laughs> by Mrs. Cratchit since our marriage. Now the weight is off my mind, I will confess. I had my doubts about the quantity of flour. At last, the dinner was all done. The hot punch being tasted and considered perfect. A shovel full of chestnuts were thrown upon the fire, and all the cratches drew around the hearth. Are these all the glasses? Uh-huh. He broke the other one. I did not. You did too. You were the one who knocked it off the table. But you were the one who put it on the table. She asked me to bring it to her. I didn't ask you to put it there. All right, all right, all right. No matter. These will do as well as if they were a whole set of golden goblets. Bob served it out with beaming looks, while the chestnuts on the fire sputtered and crackled noisily. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. God bless us, everyone, said Tiny Tim, the last of all. He sat very close to his father's side. Bob held his withered little hand in his as if he loved the child and dreaded that he might be taken from him. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. <laughs>